China seems intent on leading the way in the field of autonomous driving technology, and one Chinese company that is bringing the fight straight to Tesla's autopilot is Xpeng. On January 26th, Xpeng made available an OTA upgrade that brings a suite of new features to its Xpilot 3.0 semi-autonomous driving system. Today, we're going to get a peek at what it can do. So now we're going to experience what I think is the most interesting and important part of this car and probably this video and that would be Xpeng's NGP or Navigation Guided Pilot. That's the name for their semi-autonomous driving system. Basically, here's how it works. You start by putting in a destination into the GPS, either with your uh, touch controls or with your voice. So before we set off, there is one thing that I need to do. Before you can actually turn on the NGP for the first time, if you're a first time driver, you have to go to the menu go to the driving assists, and then when you turn on NGP for the first time, a little QR code will pop up, at which point you open your Xpeng app, you scan the QR code, and it will provide for you a five minute instructional video that basically tells you all the functions of the car and some of the things that it can't do. Once you've finished that video, you then have a 10 question quiz, which if you answer all the questions correctly, it lets you keep answering until you get them all right. It will then unlock the NGP feature. Now, ideally, uh, Xiaopeng suggests that every time a new driver uses the car, they should go through the video and the quiz. Now that I've finished the quiz, of course, I can just hit the OK button, and now the NGP system is activated, and then I can use it once I set off. Ni hao, Xiao Pi. 呃,导航区,花度,母两庄酒店。结果是一几个。Now I select my route. 为你找到三条路线,请选择前方一百米,请来道路并行走。Okay, so as we set off here, I am completely in control. The NGP navigation guided pilot has not started yet. It will begin uh, will offer the option of starting NGP once we reach a point at which the system has a uh, high resolution map. So what this system does is it relies on a combination of high resolution mapping and uh, sensors, both ultrasonic and uh, radar, wave radar and 14 different cameras, all these different things, and it puts them all together. So once we reach a point on the route, in which the system feels it can take over, it will then prompt me to do so. This is still my favorite part though. <laughs> so, it's talking to me a lot. So as we get on the highway here, I'm looking for a little light that's gonna turn on. Okay. So now it's telling me that NGP can be activated. Activating it is a very simple process, one that you'll be very familiar with if you've ever driven a, a Tesla. It's just one, two. So at this point, NGP has completely taken over. Now, there we go. And you've just seen one of the features that I was going to talk about, which is that it does automatic lane changes. Not only does it do automatic lane changes, but it will also do automatic overtaking. So right now I'm coming up on a car. It noticed that and it had turned and moved over uh, into this left lane. I found that it generally uh, likes to stay in the left lane. Um, now the autonomous system, it has uh, part of the features that this camera has is it's going to detect all the different kinds of signs on the road. Uh, and that does include speed limits. So right now this vehicle based on, I'm sure on the signs and also on the high resolution mapping and GPS, it knows the road I'm on and it knows the speed limit. So it has adjusted the uh, NGP system, the cruise control part of it to be set at the speed limit. In this case, 120 kilometers an hour, about 70 miles per hour or so. And it's gonna control this all the way from getting off here at the exit, 
following along the roundabout here or the turn all the way to merging with the rest of traffic. Um, in fact, I've noticed that whether it's changing lanes or merging or whatever, it uses the turn signal every time, which is very highly appreciated. I would argue that this car has better driving manners than most of the people that are actually on the road. So that's a good thing. I will say that, and I understand why it does this, when it gets onto these um, off ramps and changes from other, one highway to another, it immediately goes down straight to the speed limit. And you don't realize just how slow the speed limit is on these, um, these roundabout, these turns, until you actually drive on it in the speed limit. Uh, I understand why the system does that, of course. That's, a, that's an important safety feature. Um, but in this case, I'm going to ask it to go a little bit faster, which it actually doesn't want to do. Well, I suppose, I suppose that's safer that way anyways. So now we are back onto a straightaway. It's speeding back up from 60 to 100 kilometers an hour. And we're preparing. Actually, we have. We have now gotten onto uh, a highway. And at this point, it has adjusted back up to 100 kilometer per hour speed limit. And it noticed the car in front of me and it's already starting to overtake. So now we're about to drive through a tunnel, which is traditionally kind of a blind spot for a lot of autonomous driving systems. Now, there we go. Check the steering wheel. Now, the combination, I think in this case, of the mapping system as well as the cameras and the radar means that the uh, P7 can handle tunnels like this very well. At least right now, it's working, it's working very, very well. Obviously maintaining the speed limit. And we're almost out. Touch the steering wheel. We made it. So, you know, drama free, which I suppose when you have an autonomous driving system or a semi-autonomous driving system, sorry, you really don't want drama. <laughs> So when it comes to how the car makes sure that you're engaged in the driving experience and being as safe as possible, uh, there are two main ways that these systems work. The first is either monitoring your eye line using a camera or <clears throat> relying on you to apply, occasionally apply torque to the steering wheel. As of right now, this system relies on a torque sensing um, system here in the steering wheel. Every about 30 to 45 seconds, it will remind you, hey, wiggle the steering wheel a little bit, let us know that you're conscious. Um, the other system for other cars is there's a camera here, obviously, that measures your eye line. Now, this does have a camera, but that feature is not activated. And when this system goes live and the upgrade, the OTA upgrade goes out uh, sometime before Chinese New Year, that's early February, it will be relying solely on the um, sensing system. Now, at this point, we are getting off of the highway. This is the other thing that the system is capable of doing, which is obviously getting on, it gets on and it gets off. So we're coming up to a toll booth and what's happening is it's telling me 200 meters, 150 meters, 100 meters is warning me, get ready. You need to get ready. The system is going to be turning off and you are gonna be taking back over. So at this point, now the NGP has kind of turned off and I am back in control as we approach this toll booth. So now what you guys are gonna see is the process for exiting the system. So at this point, we've gotten off of the highway and it's giving me several reminders. It tightens the seatbelt and buzzes the seatbelt, it buzzes the steering wheel or vibrates it. It has a warning here on the main screen and it also has one here on the dashboard. So it's very unlikely that you will be able to miss all of these cues to let you know that the NGP system is now turning off and you are completely taking over. So overall, based on the somewhat limited time that I've spent with the car, you know, I think it's, it's very good. Uh, I'm looking forward to giving a more direct comparison between it and the full autopilot or FSD car from Tesla. Uh, but if it performs this well in more circumstances, I think it's gonna be one of the most competitive systems on the market, if not probably the best. 
The one thing that I'm really looking forward to in terms of the safety is this car does come equipped with a camera. However, the first version of this, the OTA upgrade that's going to become available uh, for before Chinese New Year of this year, which is about uh, or beginning of February or so, uh, does not use the camera. It only uses the torque sensor in the steering wheel. I think that the ideal system is one in which it uses both a torque sensor and a camera. So I really hope that they come out with a combination system as quickly as possible in the future. I think that's just going to be the safest option for the technology that we have right now. Using NGP requires certain hardware, so the OTA upgrade will only be available on the wing and premium versions of the P7. At an estimated price of about $3,000, it will also be significantly cheaper than Tesla's FSD package here in China, which costs about three times as much.